Hi everyone, um, so I've done a few videos talking about Spear uh, and I've specifically shown uh, this replica here um, which is a, a winged spear uh, from Hanwei, a Chinese company, Paul Chen, Hanwei um, and um, I just thought I'd talk very briefly about winged spears uh, they do appear uh, for quite a long period of history um, this type specifically kind of appear in the kind of 8th century, 7th century maybe uh, so the, the kind of uh, Frankish Anglo-Saxon period in Western Europe, uh, they appear right the way across Europe um, and they're often confused with um, boar spears. Now a boar spear has a, a cross piece here to prevent a wild boar uh, theoretically running up your shaft uh, and goring you. That's how it's usually explained. Personally, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not by any means an expert on uh, wild boar hunting and I understand some of you out there might be because there are videos of it on YouTube. Um, but um, I think that they're probably more to just pin the animal in place because uh, one of the vital um, sort of characteristics of boar hunting actually was the use of dogs. Um, you can do it from horseback but generally speaking Boar hunting was done with a pack of dogs, not particularly big dogs, usually something like a kind of Springer Spaniel or a Labrador, uh, and they're really there to grab onto the boar, hold it in place, uh, while you run up either with a spear or sometimes with a sword, and stick the thing. Uh, and I think, you know, by and large, the cross piece, yes, theoretically, uh, a boar might be able to work its way up the shaft of a weapon, uh, possibly, I don't know, you can express your views on that in the comments below, but I think generally speaking, it's to pin the thing in place. Uh, probably while um, a couple of your buddies uh, stick it as well. But this winged spear, whether it does share an origin in the boar spear or not, I don't really know. Um, they don't really look particularly like boar spears, and it should be mentioned even from an early date, even in the sort of 8th, 9th century when these things appear, they don't look quite the same as boar spears themselves. Boar spears tend to have a particular style of cross piece on them that isn't really like this winged uh, design that often has these uh, sort of squared off um, lugs either side of the base of the socket. Uh, so they do look a bit different even from an early date. Uh, in terms of why these wings are there, well there's various reasons I suppose. Uh, theoretically you could say it's for um, blocking things and that's certainly true. We know if we look at uh, the 16th century uh, Bolognese treatises uh, that uh, pole weapons that have uh, lugs sticking out the side like that, they are sometimes used to push away or even perhaps hook away uh, an opposing pole weapon in particular. So if you're fighting someone else with a spear, if you have lugs on yours, you can push their weapon to the side and stab them. Uh, using it uh, a little bit like a cross piece on the sword, I suppose. Um, uh, and uh, the other potential use for them in the early period might have been to uh, hook the top edge of a shield out of the way. So obviously these appeared in the time of um, shield walls, so potentially if you're using it either one-handed or two-handed, if you can hook the lug over the opponent, opponent's shield and pull it forwards, you can create an opening into which to stab with the same spear. Okay. Uh, so potentially pushing other people's pole weapons away, hooking uh, shields and perhaps weapons out of the way. And lastly I would say they do have some kind of striking capacity. Now I don't think that that's a primary purpose of them at all uh, because they tend to be not pointed. They tend to be quite square like, like these, certainly in the early earlier type. Uh, and, and so I think that striking is probably not a a primary purpose of them, because if that was then they'd be either edged or pointed. Uh, however you can do it nevertheless, uh, if you thrust at someone and your point goes past the target, why not give them a smack in the side of the neck or, or face uh, as you withdraw the thing to stab again. Um, now the last thing I'll say is, although these appeared in the sort of so-called Dark Ages in the Frankish Anglo-Saxon period, uh, you do uh, see winged spears of various sorts right the way through the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. So you see, see things uh, that are variously known as uh, corsec, uh, spitum, uh, partisan, these kind of weapons are all forms of so-called winged spear. So the feature that they pretty much all have in common is they all have a long spear blade with edges on it, so it has some capacity to cut, perhaps to chop a little bit, mostly probably to push cut and draw cut. 
uh, whilst still being primarily a thrusting weapon. Um, but all of them have some form of projection at the base of the socket or at the base of the blade. Um, and as I mentioned, we know from the uh, 16th century Italian sources that these uh, projections are used both offensively and defensively. And the other thing I'll say is, as well as appearing famously so in, in the Renaissance, they are around in the Middle Ages as well, in the 14th and 15th century, and a weapon very much, um, very much like this, but called Giavarina, uh, is shown in Fury Delivery's treatise in uh, 1410. Um, and interestingly, if you look at John Florio's 16th century uh, English-Italian dictionary and look up Giavarina, he translates that word as um, spontoon. And in actual fact, we have a very late survival in England uh, particularly, but also in France and a few other countries, um, of uh, spontoon. If you Google spontoon, you'll see that even in the 18th and 19th centuries, it was a, a sergeant's weapon, usually carried instead of a musket and a bayonet so that the sergeant could still fight hand to hand and it's essentially um, a spear, a not particularly long spear, usually they're only about seven foot long, um, with a cross piece and the cross piece on the spontoon usually looks pretty much like a cross guard on a medieval sword. It doesn't really have any offensive purpose but certainly it could be used defensively to uh, push aside uh, an opposing bayonet or spear or whatever you're opposed to really or indeed to block if someone cuts um, at your head. Um, so there we go. The winged spear has many different types, as I mentioned, speedums, uh, rancer, consec, um, uh, partisans, and so on, and spontoons. And you really see, although this design is from the sort of end of the Dark Ages, the sort of eighth and ninth century, you can see forms of winged spear that run all the way through the Middle Ages, through the Renaissance, and even have a late survival up until the nineteenth century. Cheers.